Hey guys, I'm Fidel1258 here. Today I'm going to share with you a clip from a recent members only live event in which myself and Gathering the Magic are going to be talking about SPS, vouchers, soulbound reward cards, and the short term, medium term, and long term price predictions around these different tokens and their values. We share an excitement about what this game is and what it might become, and I hope that might be exciting and encouraging to you if you enjoy this amazing blockchain based video game. So, if that sounds interesting, stick around. And special thank you to Gathering the Magic. Check out his channel. And finally, if you want to be present during these live events, check out my members only section on my YouTube page and maybe consider supporting the channel. And then you'll be invited to these weekly lives. Have an amazing day. God bless. For the first time in probably about two to three months, I'm playing my $10 account again. Hmm. Uh, now that they've made the changes to Glint and increased the earnings at the lower levels, mm -hmm. that has really helped me a lot because I was only earning about 15 to 20 Glint per win. So to win seven or eight matches to get one card just wasn't really worth it. Yep. Um, but now I played a little bit today and I think I'm up to, um, I'm still in bronze, I think bronze two, but I'm earning over a hundred Glint per win. So that's fantastic. And so you're in bronze too, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you're I'm getting... playing in modern. I'm, and... I haven't bought um, the Wild Pass with my $10 account. So yeah. just playing in modern and seeing how that goes. And and um, so this is your account where you bought the account and you, did you did you put any extra money in it or is it just earned? I forget. Nope, nope just earned, not, not any money. Yeah, and then you, you will sometimes have you generated oh you you have put correct me if i'm wrong because I, I think this is worth clipping i, I think that people are going to want to know like what's possible especially with that re revision so re remind me of refresh me on the details i think you maybe take some value from splinter forge and move it into that account or splinter am i wrong forge. about that yep splinter forge so back um geez it was more than six months ago um when splinter forge had decent um earnings for forge i would convert some of the forge earnings to dec and move that in game because to me even with splinter forge i didn't spend any money on it so these are two games that i joined for free i would take the forge earnings convert it to dec send it in game and then i would either use that to uh, rent cards or slowly I would save that up and then I would buy like a summoner here and there, the Chaos Legion rare summoners. Mm -hmm. um, when they were cheap, I would buy a gold foil common uh, because that's automatically uh, level three, which is max bronze. Yep. And my thinking was, I'm just gonna build a really strong uh, bronze account. Um, at the time there wasn't wild. So you could just play, you know, whatever cards you wanted to. So, you know, I would get the cheap alphas, the cheap betas and untamed commons and kind of round out my deck. Mm -hmm. But yeah, other than the Splinter Forge earnings, I have not put any outside money into the game. Just the $10 spell book. Um, back when I first uh, started the account, you would get DEC and chess. Mm -hmm. I think you remember that. Yep. So I would take those chest earnings and then just slowly build those up to uh, to buy, buy more cards. Uh, and now after just enjoying that process, because I, I, you'll cover that you have and you pro hopefully will again cover that, that um, accomplishment and that progress with that account on your own channel and it's i think it's really valuable i've whenever i talk about your channel I, that's one of the things i think about where you cover from a different angle this game that people i think people don't yet fully understand what Splinter is i think most people don't even know and those who know but i don't necessarily fully understand it and so i think that covering it from that side of things where you can actually just play the game and largely mm -hmm. almost exclusively not put anything into it Somebody might argue, well, the assets from another game is a financial investment that you're putting into Splinterlands. And you would say, well, yeah, but I'm, I'm enjoying that process too. And it's like, you know, neither of them cost me except for the spell book. And um, I think that makes perfect sense. But it's also, it's, I think, evidence that you can have fun even at the lower levels. It's also, I think, evidence that you can extract some sort of, like you can start to accumulate something. And with mm -hmm. SPS being where it is currently, and also Soulbound cards not having these ones, not really having a quote unquote value yet because you can't unlock them, the new ones. Uh, the old ones, I guess you theoretically could, but there'd be a cost. All of this, I think, is like a bit of a actual real world example of, of what's possible for somebody that wanted to start today or, or, or soon. And, um, and so you're saying 100 plus glint per win is that and how much is a let's go to the shop how much is a chest 
Um, it's 150 for a common card and it's 200 for a minor chest. And one thing I was thinking of making a video on is I've seen some other people um, post content for the new reward cards and they're buying chests. Don't buy chests. Don't buy chests until you get your draws. Draws are going to get you cards guaranteed. Chests, um, two out of three are not going to have a card in them. And, mm. and you're not going to get your value. For what you spend for a chest, you could buy you know X amount of commons or maybe a rare or two. So since we're all basically starting fresh, unless you're um, one of the people that is fortunate enough to have like half a million or a million glint to spend right off the bat, you know, I had um, 75,000 uh, glint on my main account. So what I did is I divided the glint into three, basically. I'd spend a third of it on epics, a third of it on rares, and a third of it on commons. Yeah. Um, so Because my thought is I want to get my commons to at least level five as quick as possible. Um, check them out and see when they get their abilities. Usually level six, they'll get another ability. Yeah. Uh, so once I hit level six, I think I'm pretty much good. Because after that, you're just going to gain like one health or one speed. Yeah. And uh, for my main account, I want to focus on a gold level. So if I can get up to level eight commons, I think level six rares, maybe level three or four epics, I'll be good. Hmm. And uh, the legendaries I wasn't really impressed with, um, simply because I'm not going to get them to max level. Hmm. Um, but those are going to be what I'm going to focus on last. So it's commons first, rares, and then um, there's a couple epics I really love. So hopefully I can manage to get those. That's interesting, your, your, your sort of approach to it, because First of all, I, I kind of wish we spoke yesterday and not today because I yesterday spent a million glint on um, everything. I bought I bought eight hundred commons because well I'll tell I'll tell you why in a minute. But I bought eight hundred commons. I bought a uh, hundred rares. I bought twenty five epics and uh, ten legendaries, and then I bought um, the maximum of each of the chests because I thought like I looked at the numbers. I go well. First of all, I'd be happy if I got some one of those crazy jackpot bonuses. That'd be cool. Uh, but I also like merits too. You know mm -hmm. what? I kind of stand by my decision because, and, and, and but it's it's interesting to hear the difference because, um, one, I have a lot more glint than you, and then two, I make more glint, and then three, I have sort of maybe different goals than you, and so I have uh, I have no problem having more energy for for instance because that means I'm going to get more glint next pl next more wins yeah yep. more wins more SPS more gl um, glint for next season. Um, now it actually is non-sustainable for me to do that again. Like I, I, I had 2.4 million glint. Now I have 1.4 million glint after yesterday. And so I can, you can do it again next season if I want the same thing, but then I'm going to be done with that process. So I was trying to think through and I'm getting a little away from our, our starting conversation. I want to cycle back a little bit around talking around your, um, your $10 account, but just, it's interesting to think through how you can approach whatever your particular circumstances with your account in this. For me, I would love it if I could get the max of these draws every time, every season for the next foreseeable several seasons. That That is about 650,000, 700,000 glint. I can't do that regularly. Even if I only did that, I would burn out a glint, you know, in four seasons, maybe five, because I'm going to get more glint as we go along. Um, so, and that's not, you know, I, that's not going to get me to a max level set. And for that reason, and because I was like looking at the comp, you know what, I'm going to, I'll stop that thought there. Um, it's just an interesting to hear you say what you said about the chests. You do, do you, do you not value merits energy or I guess potions you don't value, but merits or energy, you don't value those. I, I, I value all of them. Uh, the only reason I said don't buy chests is don't buy them right away. Like I love um, the merits and potions and all that because they all are very useful. But for me, when you're starting from scratch, the key is I want to get the cards as quick as possible. You know, yeah. I can always get the merits and the potions yeah. and all that later, and I will. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, my focus is to get kind of a starting level for all of the different rarities. Yeah. And then after that, maybe cycle in a few chests here and there. I have great... Um, results from the major chess. Mm. The ultimate chess, I think are way, way, way too overpriced. Mm. I mean, yes, you could get a jackpot, but let's say for example, you get 10 ultimate chess, seven of them won't have cards on average. And of the other three that do have cards, two of them are gonna be all commons and maybe the other one is like three or four rares. So to me for 45,000 glint, I would rather have, uh, what is that? 300 commons, 
or <laughs> you know yeah maybe 50 or 60 rare cards yeah and that makes a lot of sense to me it's it's about it's it's almost like you, i've heard you talk about with uh golem overlord you like to choose battles where you know you got the 100 percent chance to win what you're talking about yep. is is you want to you want guaranteed returns you want common draws because i want a common card i don't want to go, i don't want to roll my my glint to do a minor chest and walk away with potions that i don't need and and maybe the potions long term i will want maybe but for today with there being a brand new set of cards i want to make sure i walk away with that card is that what you're saying yeah yeah because yeah. i think it's for me like you said you earn a lot more glint than i do so the glint to me i have to make the best use of it mm -hmm. for what i have mm -hmm. Um, like I said, for my main account, I had 75,000 glint. So it's like, hey, if I had a million glint, I'll tell you right now what my strategy would be. Every season, I'm buying a title. Yep. And then every season, I'm selling that title a dollar cheaper than the next person, and I'm buying SPS because that's going to give me more glint. Then I'm going to get a, a million glint quicker again. I'm going to sell it again, and I'm going to buy more SPS, and I'm going to just keep cycling through that and uh, build up my SPS bag, especially with it being at half a cent. You're making me want to talk about that too. I really I, let's put a pin in the conversation around the around the um, the title. I really want to circle back to that, but I want to finish this thought around your ten dollar account because I was thinking people are going to want to be able to see that. And you're saying you're getting yeah. you're getting how many of these draws can you pull like a, a day? Are we talking one or two? Um, I just did a few battles. In fact, the video I just recorded. Um, I've got a new series that I'm starting, uh, unofficially calling it magic or tragic nice so i'm playing battles and if i win magic has won and if i lose it's tragic so well, that's, that's um, awesome. i did actually play the ten dollar account i think i won my first three or four battles and then lost the last one uh went in the store i think i bought like four commons so for me you know starting from scratch if i can get four or five common cards every day yeah um you know i can build up that account pretty quick and if yeah. and if anybody in the chat wants to check it out uh the account is gedfer g e d P H I R. You can go on Peak Monsters. Um, you can look at my whole account. You can look at my uh, the cards that I own, uh, my soul bounds, all of that. And I started the account. Uh, was it two years or I think it's been two years. I think it was June of twenty two. I was, started the account. How do I spell it again? G E D P H I R. Oh yeah, yeah. P um, yeah, so if anybody wants to go along and track my progress and, you know, like I said, I'm not going to put any outside money and I'm not even putting a forge in it anymore. It's just simply what I'm earning in game. And uh, for those people that don't have a lot of money to spend, um, what I've done the last three months that has worked for me to generate income is uh, flipping packs. Mm. So I will go on Hive Engine and I will look at the pack prices and I will compare them to uh, pack prices in the marketplace mm -hmm. and like for Chaos Legion. Um, I was buying Chaos Legion packs around the 30, 32 cent range. And then in game, they were selling at the time 35, 36 cents. Cool. So I'm making like two, three, four cents every pack and yeah. just rinse and repeat. Love it. Um, occasionally, I would buy Rift Watchers for two bucks, sell it for 240. And I got, you know, it was fun. So yeah. I was doing that and I was creating a lot more money than I was, you know, winning seven glint and yeah. 0 0.001 SPS. Yeah. So that was my path. So the change to Glint has really impacted your returns. Is that right? Is it, has that change in Glint and the really changed and maybe renewed your interest in playing this low, lower account? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, I haven't played the ten dollar account in probably two, two, two and a half months because you know, I, it, for me, I don't have that much time to play. So I would play my main account, and I'm like, well, I can't really play Getfer and get. You know 15 glint because it's going to take me you know yeah. 10 wins to get a card yeah and i got into actually the way i started was i had a gold foil beta creeping ooze that i had bought um because i'm like i need to come up with a couple dollars so i can start this flipping process so i sold that card for three bucks went on hive i bought i I think actually chaos legion back then was like 40 or 50 cents so i got like six or eight packs of chaos legion sold them in game made about 50 cents so now i can buy nine packs would sell those now i can go back and turn that into 11 packs and eventually i grew that to like 30 40 packs of chaos legion started to buy the more expensive packs sell those and just kind of snowballed it so yeah, you man. don't have to put outside money in the game there is ways that you can use the assets you do have in game to uh to generate some funds totally
grinding grinding that it's like the time and attention that's it man you're the triaging packs splinter forge for a little here and there golem overlord for a little here and there i actually was ignoring golem overlord for two three months i i track how much i've earned through golem overlord and um uh, and I, I have an Excel spreadsheet and from June to June 22nd to August 18th, actually that's exactly when Gregory came. So when Gregory came until like this week, I, I didn't touch it, but now I've been, I sold a buck 36 worth of, uh, four or, uh, not forge part the other day. And I, I have about another buck 50 or so to sell today. And, um, every other day I can, I can do that kind of thing. And so, you know, you got it, but people people who are listening to this or who you and me like we have this idea that what we our little actions today can multiply across time and tons of people don't believe that and tons of people are going to come in the middle of the next like when things are green and candles are crazy and everyone's excited and they're going to rush in when in that middle of that moment but it's like i really this is it man this what you're describing is the path it's not show up late and, and expect to ride into on to off to the moon. It's like, just enjoy the process. And that you always say that, Hey, what's, what's the tagline? Like keep on forging. Yeah. 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 Stay the course, keep on forging and have fun. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. If only, if only that could land. And I think it will for a whole new group of people after the next buyer market, like what, like there'll be a, another bull moment. I think prices will go fun and SPS will do crazy things and will attract new players and everything the team is doing is, you know, whether it's the stickiness around the players or the development of the user experience or the, you know, the mobile, you know, improvements or whatever. There's so many cool things happening and there's more to come. Um, and we will attract new player base and like, I bet one in a hundred or maybe 10% if we're lucky, will really grab what you're describing. And, and, uh, that'll be great. That, that it, it sounds like that'll be a disappointment in some sense it will, but that, that's just the way of things with, especially where money's are, you know, part of the picture, there's going to be the audience who come and, and they want the, the zeros and ones. They don't really, they, they're not really here for the joy of the process. They're, they're here for that. And so nine out of 10 of them will fall away, but, but that we will see continued and committed and significant and, and reoccurring and sustainable growth and the game will keep going and you know people and then again in like two years three years people will say the same things that they're saying now sps is going to go to zero and you know the game's going to disappear and because that's a bit of the salt that's out there right now but all that i think it just ebbs and flows in the same way we've seen over the years bitcoin is dead mm -hmm. bitcoin is everything bitcoin is dead bitcoin is everything it's like these narratives shift and 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 meanwhile people that are more sort of moderate yourself included have this like just slow and steady approach. I don't need to mortgage the house to buy Bitcoin when candles are green. I don't need to, I just go slow and steady. And that's where progress and uh, real change is gonna be made, I think. I am so excited for this game for when we get, we don't have to get tens of thousands of players. I mean, I do my market watch video every every weekend. And I'm, I'm thinking if we get 20 to 25 players that are like Vodkas or, yeah. um, or vet v or you know a big player yeah. they can just absolutely wipe out the market i did a video last weekend where i was going through um prices of all the different cards and i remember it was Vruz, and the price didn't change much it was like 10 or 11 cents by the time i recorded the second part of the video someone had wiped the market and the cheapest one was 60 cents mm -hmm. and just a span of two hours so that person probably didn't even spend a hundred dollars and they completely wiped out the market and then just relisted it at six times the price. Now yeah. imagine if someone comes into the game and they've got thousands of dollars to spend that they made from Bitcoin profits, they're gonna have no problem wiping out all the gold foil legendaries for a rebellion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. And that's another angle too, like long-term flipping. I think there's really an opportunity for flipping. A lot of this requires patience though. And maybe the reward, you talked about flipping some of those, triaging some of those packs for three or 40 cent profits. And some people will say that's not worth my time. And you, and I go, okay, then maybe, you know, if you can't find joy in that process, then that, that process isn't for you. But if you can find joy in that process, you're going to actually grow the investment within this game just through time and effort, time and attention. And that is interesting when you start to recognize 
the assets you're receiving, the assets that you're multiplying are themselves um, multipliable or how do I say that? Like that they can, they can, their price, for instance, of SPS can go from half a penny to five cents or from half a penny to two cents or from half a penny to a dollar, I think is possible. And so if you're accumulating that now or the, or the soulbound cards, which are the old set just went off, like uh, essentially they're now no longer available. Yes, I know you could theoretically buy them from the marketplace after people unlock them, but generally speaking, I don't I don't think we're going to see a huge after sound said that the old the la, the Chaos Legion Soulbounds rewards might end up being one of the rarer sets. And I think that logic makes some sense to me because people are reluctant to burn mm -hmm. their DEC to unlock those and yet you and me and everybody who's you know probably watching a video like this is is going to have enjoyed them created them earned them and they matter like i was showing a video or i was showing a battle while you were chatting earlier and it's a it's a recent win that i i led and i'll just quickly sh load the screen look at this dry bone dry bone barbarian slowbound reward card um uh, Mark Strat, Soulbound Reward card. Uh, those are the, and then Captain Katie, not a Soulbound Reward, but a Soulbound Gladiator. And so those are cards that I've earned through time and effort that distinguish my account from others and allow me to win games like this, which is when I won. And as a result, get SPS I might not otherwise get. Glint I might not otherwise get. And so there's monetary value even tied into the non-monetary assets that you earn through that time and effort. Whether it's pack triaging card triaging you know monster flipping or just earning through effort it's like there's so much long-term opportunity and if there is a multiplication of the value of those acquired assets possible going from half a penny to five cents would tr radically transform this win from a you know a meaningless win to me financially to you know a 60 cent win maybe or a 12 dollar win if we ever get to a, t a dollar and so but I, I'm preaching to the choir. You, you already agree with me on those things. Yeah. Um, one thing I don't know if you can look at when you look at someone's account is how much SPS they have, because that's really starting. You talked about snowballing assets and all that. And I've noticed just in the last six months for my $10 account, mm -hmm. how my SPS is starting to snowball. Like cool. for the longest time, I was around five, 600 SPS. Then I made it to a thousand. It hasn't taken me long to get to 3000. And I'm thinking, okay, pretty soon I'm going to be at five, then I'm going to be at seven, then I'm going to be at nine, which is going to just increase my glint earnings even more. Mm -hmm. And so I'm starting to see that uh, snowball effect take place right now. And that makes me feel like a whale because I got 11,000 SPS here that I'm not even, they're not even staked. I'm just like, for no reason at all. In fact, let's do this. <laughs> um, I need to get more SPS and I will. People, somebody the other day said... Yeah, at half a cent, I definitely need to get a lot more SPS. I was looking at the value of the SPS and thinking about how much money I put in just buying SPS over the last two years. And I'm like, wow, it's down to like under $300. And I'm like, man, if I put $300 in right now for SPS, I would double my SPS. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. Yeah, I um, the other day I seriously considered moving $1,000 worth of other crypto into SPS. Um, and right now that trade would have, would have been up if I had done that, but I, I didn't, um, because I really feel that my other crypto is going to move. And so I'm really reluctant after years of holding that other crypto to just kind of and like reallocate. Um, mm -hmm. but I want SPS and I do value it. I, I have earned 50,000 SPS or 45,000 SPS in the last I don't know how long, but I was under 200,000 because I sold some um, when we were at four or five cents, four cents, I think. And then um, uh, with that, I bought cards. Those cards went, were rebellion. Those rebellion cards have held value. And I and I and I've earned another 42,000 or 50,000 SPS in that process. But to your earlier point, and if we could circle back now on getting titles and then maybe liquidating that. I'd like to talk more about that because I, I do want to build my bag of SPS and I do feel like I'm underfunded here and I and my rewards are not maximized and and I want more of this and I believe long term in it. Um, so let's let's talk more about that title idea. You're saying if you had enough like a million glint, you'd buy a title. Um, oh, instantly. Yep. I might I might do that right now and right now. Um, 
let's let's look at this. One thing, one thing I've been checked on the market. What is the uh, the lowest title selling for? I think the last I looked at was around 40, 40 ish dollars. Let's somewhere. see. Let's see. Because I know the high end ones sold out. Yeah, um, I wanted one of the high end ones. I was like kind of secretly saving up for it, but um, I don't know if I would have ultimately done it with the new reward set being out. But I was considering it. Let's say. Mm, let's go here. So we go into market and then we go other items. In the titles. Where is it? Probably then the pro these are them, right? Or the proven? I think it's the proven. Let me come over here. Let's go into top boards. I wanna I wanna figure this out here. I wanna with you. So I, I, do, I think I, just doing a quick math, if if I could sell a title, let's just say for $39, because I think that's what I saw it at. If SPS is at a little over half a cent, I think it's at like 0.560056 or whatever. Yeah. You would get almost 7,000 SPS. Then you stake that, you'd earn more glint, so you would get the next million a little bit quicker. Yeah. Sell it again for $39, another 7,000 SPS, and you could just kind of grow it that way. Or what I would probably do is buy uh, half of it in SPS and half of it in vouchers before the vouchers disappear off a of hive. Yeah, so I also want to talk about that too because um, I am interested in getting some vouchers. Uh, what is that? What is seven thousand SPS US dollar wise? I think it's thirty some dollars. Okay, so SPS I put at zero zero. I just put five five. I think it's somewhere a little over half a penny. So well, let me look and at this. Types. We got if we if we set a million glint for the proven, we come back and we see that the proven is theoretically selling for twenty eight five, and there's several copies in that range. You know, five copies at least in that. Um, you'd have to come in at like twenty seven or something like that. Uh, a million glint. I have to say, I think I think I value a million glint a lot more than thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. You know. I'm going to get with a million. So I spent a million glint yesterday on reward car on rewards. Like I told you, I got 800 commons. I got a hundred rares, 25 epics, 10 legendaries. Um, and I got the maximum of these, whatever, whatever that is, 300 minor chests, 150 majors and 30 ultimate chests. And I spent about a million glint. Maybe it was 900,000. So I would rather repeat that process next season than, than get, 30 bucks today, I think, even if I could, even if I could theoretically liquidate that today. And I do want that SPS and I do see your value in saying, what, like just throwing it on the pile and building that bag. And you're right. Once you add that SPS, it's going to produce more SPS. And so there's that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I think what I'm saying is I'm surprised that people are spending a million glint to buy a title they don't want to get a few bucks to, when these, in my mind, these assets are more meaningful. Do you think, is it short-sighted gathering to like, to put, to value 30 bucks over 800 common cards, 100 rares, 25 epics and 10 legendaries. And before you even, and by the way, there's, that's not counting all those chests. And before you answer, look at my set of cards. Go here. This is what I got yesterday, spending a million flint. These are just my rebellion reward cards. Um, like, okay, let's look at my legendaries. Check this out. This was pretty cool. Uh, legendary gold foil, Ib endless gibbon. Not that I super care about that card, but legendary gold foil and a second legendary gold foil. Blackmore Jinx. Um, now I don't really care about either of them, to be honest, at this, this, this level. But I mean, come on. That's pretty cool too. I got, I did get very lucky. Um, but then epics, I did, I don't know. This one, this, these are mostly not playable to me. You know, at these levels, I'm not going to largely play them, but check this one out. Shocker troop, shock trooper, four mana, four damage, four speed, five hit points. That's going to find the rotation, even though it has this electrified, I'm going to, this will play sometimes even at level two for me at a champion or gold or diamond or wherever I play. Um, and I'm thinking particularly in a, uh, you know, it's interesting. These, uh, these, what are they called again? These ones with the bad, what, what's that? What are these bad abilities called? I got you again. 
So I don't know if I lost you in what point of that conversation, but I was trying to make the point that um, two points. One, I think a million glint. I might, as I think through those two options, I'm, I'm excited. I'm interested in, in your proposal to buy that title, to liquidate that, to buy the assets, to get the SPS or the vouchers. And maybe vouchers is a separate conversation. We could talk about that for a minute. But like, I think these are pretty meaningful cards. And I, I showed a couple legendary gold foils, which I got lucky on. Some of these epics are probably playable in certain contexts. I think Shock Trooper, even though it's only level two, will be playable when I um, have back to basics rule set because the electrified will drop away. And same with Ponzi Conjurer. This thing for two mana with four damage and three speed and five hit points, when it has no incendiary, will be a beast. Hey? Okay? Yep. Um, so I don't know if that changes anything around your thinking around if you theoretically had a million, but these are pretty cool cards and that's not even showing on my comments, which I got 800 of these. I've actually got level five, level six, like level five. Most of them are level five or six now, So I feel like 800 common chests, is pretty meaningful, pretty cool. Um, two questions. One is me showing you these cards change your opinion on if you if you had a million glint would you buy that title and then second follow-up question let's let's ro let's pull that conversation into vouchers too because we right now we're focusing on what's better 30 bucks with the sps or these cards and then i want to talk about what's better 30 bucks worth of vouchers or hmm. so i guess if i didn't have any of the new cards at all like i said my my thought was to get them to at least like silver level as quick as possible. But yeah, if I had a million glint, I think I would before I got these cards, I think I still would go for the title. Yeah. Because I can I can always get the cards, but for the title, I don't know how long they will be available. Sure. I don't know if other people are gonna do the same thing I do. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a limit. I think you can own more than one. I think so. So if you do too. buy one and sell it, I think you still can buy a second one. I'm pretty sure you can because I don't see why not. I don't think I don't know if I don't know if you could own two simultaneously, but maybe you could. And and even yeah. even if you couldn't, I think you could definitely buy another one after you sold one. Um, and I and I, uh, as we kind of talked about early on with the conversation, when you have a ten dollar account, there's a certain perspective. If you've got eight thousand or nine thousand SPS, and you could literally double it with one move, uh, that's pretty cool. Versus. Yeah versus like these cards will be there in the future and they'll be made liquid too. So if push comes to shove, if one or two of them are pretty powerful and you want them, you could buy them off the marketplace. Probably not too far off in the future, hey, because of the People's Guild proposal. Yeah, I, I think Matt talked about that a little bit in the town hall that um, because of the proposal, they would make these unlockable earlier. Mm -hmm. He didn't give a time frame. He said, you know, it's not gonna happen right away, but it sounds like it's not gonna be, you know, a year before we can unlock the new cards. So that is something to keep in mind too. Yeah, so I, it's interesting to hear your your perspective on those things. I think vouchers is, is maybe a separate conversation, but I feel like I probably would land in the same spot. I am pretty interested in vouchers though, especially they're, they're, are they being removed off of Hive Engine? I thought I heard that. Is that, that doesn't make sense to me, but are they? As of, as of yesterday, you can no longer move vouchers out of game to Hive. But whatever is on Hive is going to stay there unless um, someone moves it in. So my oh. thinking is I bought, um, I think, close to 7,000 vouchers a couple of days ago and instantly moved them to Hive because I'm like, OK, whatever is on Hive now, that's all there ever is going to be. Yeah. So on September 3rd, when that new card comes out in the voucher store, that common card, my thought is it's probably going to be, let's say, five vouchers per BCX. Yeah. So you're going to need 2,000 vouchers to max one out. Those vouchers are going to disappear off of Hive pretty quick when you're drawing several hundred to two thousand at a time. Yeah. So the the people that have um, tons of vouchers probably have them, you know, on Hive because they're like, eh, if I can sell them, I'll sell them. But once they can get a promo card and they have a use case for them, they're going to move them in. Yeah. And as soon as they move them in, they can never move them back out. So I'm thinking the voucher price is going to, you know, to me, if it goes up to five cents, which I think is a no-brainer, okay, I just five x my money because yeah. I bought the vouchers at just under a penny. Yeah. So, and like Paul said, it's going to be way more than two uh, thousand vouchers for a max. You know, I'm I'm guessing um, five for a common. Think about when they release a uh, card in the um, voucher store and it's a legendary. 
Okay, you're only going to need 11 BCX, but that's probably going to be like 500 to 1,000 vouchers per BCX. Hmm. You're going to start chewing through tens of thousands of vouchers off a hive real quick. So that means um, with that fewer amount of vouchers on Hive Engine, supply and demand, the price is going to go up because people are like, hey, I'm not going to sell it for a penny. And then it's going to be like, well, I'm not going to sell them for two cents. You know, there's only X amount left on Hive. So to me, you know, I put all the vouchers I can afford on Hive and I'm just going to sit back and, and wait for the price to go up and then, you know, slowly sell them as, as it goes to five, 10 cents or more. And don't yeah. be surprised if you see vouchers hit a quarter at some point, probably by the end of the year. Yeah. I think you make a very compelling argument. You know, everything from is the, 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 the structure is now totally incentivized to the removal of them because you can spend them and they're not coming back. Marketplace Hive Engine is holding a supply of them. It's like I've thought about this in the in the past around DC. It's as if the shelves are stocked, and nobody's rushing to the shelves because they don't really care that the shelves are stocked. They don't really see the need at this very moment. But when they need the, you remember 2020, and when when we need the the toilet paper and the shelves are empty, there's like this panic that happens, and I I think that's probably possible. I I wonder if the play is buy the vouchers and just hit them like just hold them like don't even put them on like if you bought them on hive engine and didn't move them in game but you didn't list them as liquid on the market i bet you could just sit back and just chill chill until such time yeah. that that liquidity starts to dry up because it will necessarily dry up mm -hmm. and and they don't have to sell it could be simply hey i've got five thousand vouchers on hive and oh wow there's a cool promo card i'm going to move them in game so i can buy it okay you just took five thousand vouchers right. permanently off a of hive that like you, you yeah. said are never coming back so there's that much fewer on the market hmm. yeah yeah the one pretty... thing i am curious about maybe you uh, know some more of the details is the they said they are going to add a voucher dec liquidity pool and i asked after sound um how is that going to work because i thought they're only printing forty thousand a day so if 20,000 come from SPS and the other 20,000 comes from validator nodes, uh, where are the vouchers and the LP going to come from? It's possible that the LP could be rewarded with SPS or as an alternative. And so that's what was happening, at least was happening. I don't know if it's still happening with the, let's see the, whoops, pools. So the pools... So the APR on this SPS BNB, it's not being paid in a share of BNB. It's being paid in just SPS and same SPS West, DEC uh, Hive. Even this one was being paid in SPS. And so see the rewards SPS logo. And so mm -hmm. I would expect that 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 pool is being rewarded not with not with vouchers, but with uh, or not with DEC, not with vouchers, but with SPS. I might be wrong about that, but uh, I would think that that's so. Um, I'm, I'm legitimately going to like take a hundred bucks and buy some vouchers to, I, uh, cause I want that card. I want those, I want that card for sure. And you could buy the, here's the, here's the pushback though. And I don't think I agree with this, but I'm going to say it out loud anyways. You could just buy that card that we're talking about the voucher promo off the marketplace. Someone will burn their vouchers and then sell that card. And yeah, I, I was just going to ask you that is, do you think that that card you can buy is going to be soul bound? Interesting. That'd be cool. They should make it slow, dude. That's a great idea. But I haven't heard any because otherwise, like you said, you know, I could just spend my vouchers, buy the card, and then just you know sell the card for X amount of dollars, and you know use that and buy more vouchers off the market. It's not soul bound, not says soul Paul. Bound. I was just, okay. I was just, I just as soon as you asked, I went to the checks. I wanted to see. I, Paul would have an opinion. Paul, why do you say it? Like, are you, you sound super confident? Okay, he says I asked Matt in the town uh, okay. town hall room. Not soul bound. Okay. I almost feel like it maybe should be, but regardless, if it's not soul bound, it's not soul bound. And that'll mean that people will spend their vouchers and they will go to the marketplace. Some will just plan to do that, like out of a financial opportunity in the same way you described um, around the title gathering. But then I think others will do so when the price is high. And so if we buy vouchers today at like a penny a voucher and you spend 2000 vouchers to get a max and then that's like the equivalent for you of two, what is that? 20 bucks, uh, 20 bucks, 20 bucks for a max maybe. And then you can, and you can sell it for 30. People will do that. 
if you could sell it for 30, right? If you can sell, if you can make a margin of profit there, people, some will do it just because the profit, others are going to do it just because they plan. That's literally going to be, they, they're out. They're going to say, I don't really want my vouchers. I think they're useless. And I, you know, I think they're wrong, but they, some will think this and they'll plan to do strictly that to get some liquid value for their voucher. That's, and, um, I wonder, I wonder, you might argue well, one, I want the card. So I would buy the card. I want the vouchers to get the card regardless of whether it's expensive or not. Because I think the vouchers are the, are going to be a cheap way to get it. It's not going to be cheaper than that. Not gonna, no one's going to spend 20 bucks in vouchers to get the card and then sell it for 15. And so at minimum, I think the card reaches the marketplace at the same price as the vouchers would make it. But then, yeah, I was thinking that in my head, Paul. I, I didn't say it out loud. But I, you're, you're right. Another way to liquidate vouchers or to make money from your voucher holdings is to sell them for DEC. Um, but I do, I think I'm going to want the card for its own sake. But then I do think it's going to represent, there's, there's going to be a limited, is there going to, I'm trying to think this all through right on the spur of the, like right in, right in this moment. But it seems oh. to me, oh, do you have something, some thought on that, Gather? Um, first, I want to say thank you, Paul, for that information. That is very, very useful that it's not going to be soul bound. Um, uh, what was, oh, for the uh, card, is it going to be limited to like a title? Like this first card they talked about in the voucher store is going to be a common. Is it going to be like, okay, 500? So you can have like 500 max copies. That's it. You know, I assume they're going to sell uh, one BCX at a time. So let's say 400 to max one out. Are they going to have like maybe. 40,000 available so you could get you know a total of 100 max copies or something like that and then once they're gone they're gone that would be really cool so i don't know if matt has thought about that if they're going to put some sort of a limit but it, it would be cool but yeah my guess is like paul said i think it's unlimited yeah i think that that would be my expectation to give it the opportunity for to really blow up the voucher market because matt has implied no he's actually explicitly said he would be okay with just removing voucher and so in mm -hmm. his, I think in his view, if there was an appetite to spend every voucher on this card, he'd be happy to see that. And so I yeah. think, I think that's probably unlimited is my guess too, but only three or four months makes sense. I, I don't know what, what sort of window makes sense, but that's Paul's, Paul's words. They want to, they want people to spend their vouchers. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I guess I'm oscillating between two postures. One, I should rush and get vouchers because I, I think you're making a really strong argument for why they will become more scarce and therefore more valuable. Also, we know they have an immediate, almost immediate utility with that voucher card. Third, and maybe th third, I want that card. I know it is, but I know I want it. And then four, I actually think it might be more expensive than the voucher cost. So it could represent itself a financial opportunity. But then for all of those arguments for why I want to buy vouchers now and get ready for that moment, I might simultaneously argue, well, I could just chill and buy, I could buy SPS today. And maybe that's a better opportunity. You know, there's so many ways mm -hmm. to go. Uh, half yeah. a penny SPS is pretty juicy, like you said. And we, the one thing we didn't mention earlier when we were talking about the title and moving into SPS, the opportunity to make 30 bucks turn into 7,000 SPS or whatever the math was, is an opportunity that exists today. I don't really believe that opportunity is going to exist for months to come. I think it might be even weeks to come for that to no longer be an opportunity. Um, do you have any, yeah. do you have any thoughts on, on sort of the, the long term or may, no, the short term, medium term swing in SPS as compared to that? You said 25 cents for vouchers, or you feel, feel that's possible. What oh, do you yeah. think when you, when you start to weigh that against what SPS could do in the me in that, in that exact same window, whatever that window is, what it, do you think it there? seems like SBS? I mean, I'm I'm not a, you know, economist or financial expert or any of that. But to me, just looking at the price, it looks like SBS has kind of hit the floor hmm. at half a cent. I mean, I know we've dipped a little bit lower than that. And my feeling was I thought SPS is going to continue to drift lower until it is no longer uh, given out the way it is. You know, once the uh, SPS rewards and all that are, are done. OK, finally, you know, once people are not getting it for free every day and there's some mechanic or some card or something to do with land that kind of forces you to burn sps 
that's mm -hmm. when the price is going to turn around. Because right now, we don't have anything where player is playing the game is like, okay, well, I have to spend SPS on this. You know, maybe they don't want to, but it's something that's required. And maybe people wouldn't be happy about it, but it would be really good for the price because once we have a burn mechanism, other than, you know, burning SPS for DEC, I think that's when the price really turns around. Yeah. So, but but to me, it just outside looking in, it looks like we've kind of hit the floor at half a penny. So like you said, I don't know if this opportunity will last, you know, three, six months from now, you know, we could be getting uh, closer to a penny. So now, you know, burning that uh, title for, um, or converting it to SPS, Maybe instead of getting seven thousand now, maybe in six months you're only going to get like two or three thousand, something like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, now is the time. I mean, everybody wants uh, stuff to go cheaper so they can buy more, and then when it gets cheaper, then they complain that it's cheap. So I know, I know hey. Sometimes you're just never happy. Yeah, so true.